Hello, so in the last episode we made the magic bouncing mech. But as some of you may have noticed, a magic bouncing mech is not actually what we want. We want a magic walking mech. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the mech only walks when we tell it to walk and we can tell it to walk backwards and all that stuff. So the key here is that our mech has to understand what its feet are. So here is our mech controller and here is our mech foot and so we're just going to add a list. To use lists, you always have to add the generic. Uh, oh, sorry, it's actually generic. Yeah, that's correct. And then it's public list uh, mech foot feet equals new. I don't even need to do that part. That part's okay. Uh, there. And then we can go ahead and tell it what its feet are just by finding the feet in this big list of places where there might be feet, like so. Uh, and going, hey you, you've got a foot. Actually, you have two feet. Huzzah! Like that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make it so that this thing can change what sort of uh, speed the foot is supposed to be using. So to do that, we need to go ahead and make it so the foot can be changed. So. And we're just going to go ahead and say, oh, uh, dir. But let's go ahead and make sure that we have feet. If we don't have feet, then we don't want to try doing that. Just basic stuff. And down here we say times foot speed times negative fifty thousand times delta time times delta time. Very simple. Shall we see whether that works? Uh, we're gonna land on top of this hill. Donk, 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 donk. donk. So you can see that the basics run right. Um, but there's still a lot of stuff we still need to do. One of the things we want to do is we want to make it so that when you're running, um, you, uh, uh, I guess it's a matter of taste as to how much we want to bounce, but in general we don't want to uh, bounce quite as aggressively as we are. And the reason we're bouncing so high is because we're spending more frames, uh, actually I think it's just because we're actually it might be that we're actually just bouncing. Nope. So I think it's just that um, there's something where, for some reason, uh, our bouncing gets more severe at certain points in time. So to counteract that, we're just going to reduce the vertical component. And we happen to know that the vertical component is transform.forward, because that's the one pointed into the ground, as you might remember from last episode. So now we should more or less run straight. Yep, now we can get some serious speed up. Let's go ahead and way, way reduce the speed of that. Um, that's about ten times too much. Bonk. That's a little bit more like it, except for now... Alright, so now our vertical speed is not enough to actually ever get us off the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase this to 10,000 and we're going to go ahead and not get rid of that. We're going to go ahead and make it like that. And this is just me adjusting it. This is my first take so I don't know what the variables are supposed to be. Um, I don't imagine I'll need a second take so you're going to have to live with that sort of stuff. Oh, perfect. So now we have a much more convincing walk. But we do have a couple of problems left. One of them is that when we actually get into the air, um, we're going to spend a lot of time uh, moving our feet around while we're not actually on the ground. So we'll be air running. Uh, but that's a rather minor problem in the grand scheme of things, so I'm willing to go ahead and just let it be like that. Um, if anything, our problem is now that our horizontal speed gets too high. Now the reason that that happens is because our actual collision mesh uh, isn't being, I don't know whether it's not being triggered at all or whether the physics of it are being 
uh, rather aggressively blunted. But either way, we need to make it so that we slow down horizontally um, when we are moving. And so what we're going to do now is down here when we do this on trigger stay we add this force but we're also going to go ahead and slow ourselves down slightly but only on the flat plane not on the y-axis so uh, mech dot rigid body dot velocity and then we say motion dot y equals zero and then we say motion equals uh, motion times equals. Now this is always going to be annoying because um, we have to decide exactly what sort of uh, multiple we want and we want to use time dot delta time but this actually ends up running into constraints with the floating point. Um, uh, you start to run into problems with the floating point maximums and you, you start to divide by things that are too small for it to count. But we're going to go ahead and give it a shot and see whether or not we can say something like this. And then we say motion.y equals mech.rigidbody.velocity.y and then we say mech.rigidbody.velocity equals motion. Now that's a bit of a hacky way to do it, but I don't have any problems using hacky ways to do it, especially since our feet later on may have different characteristics and we may have some high traction feet and some low traction feet. So blunt forcing it inside of the foot's mechanic is not a bad idea. Although later on we're going to have to refine the hell out of that. Now functionally this has given us a maximum speed, but the maximum speed should be very, very high. It's just that we won't reach it quite as quickly as we were before. But we aren't moving upwards very much. I want to be a little bit more bouncy than this. So we're going to go ahead and add multiple to mech.forward and that should make us bouncier. It should also mean that we spend less time on the ground which means we'll get a little bit less forward momentum but that's fine. Alright, so there we go. And you can see the air running problem I was talking about. What we're going to do, I don't, I think we're we might face that uh, tomorrow, or in the next episode, or we may do some uh, more massaging on these um, on these chunks. Uh, I haven't decided which order to do things in, but uh, now our mech is pretty well behaved. And you can see that when we hit backwards, we just kind of slide backwards. There's no backwards animation, and that's because uh, our run animation only gets triggered when we move forward. In the long run, we're going to need a variety of animations, and uh, we don't have any right now, so. All right, so um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I know that for most of you, this has been pretty pointless because very, very few of you actually are going to be using special movement mechanics. But to me, I think movement me movement mechanics are part of the core experience of the game, and if you're going to use the default move mechanics, it's going to be boring to wander around in your game world. Now this still needs a lot of work because uh, the running cycle means that we actually impact the ground at awkward moments. So in the long run we're going to use IK, um, but I don't know whether I want to do that right now. We may want to spend a couple of more episodes uh, doing other stuff first because most of you won't even be able to use IK, let alone, um, let alone want to because it requires a pro license, but it will allow us to have running animations that aren't quite so shit, aren't quite so desynced with our actual movement, if you know what I mean. Alright, so that's it for today.